fat burning during exercise sounds great, right? Unless you're burning in menopause hell to get there. <laughs> this episode unpacks the science of pros and cons of caffeine before, during, and after menopause and before your workout. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns. Mostly, though, hope to inspire you that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half, all through the science that is there for us to read about women just like you. This episode is brought to you by the Five Day Flip. If you need a set or a reset, for your menopause fitness, what you're doing right now isn't working. You're feeling more tired instead of more energy. You're not sleeping well, and you're definitely not seeing results. This is great for you. Now, any exercise program is not appropriate for everybody. So if you have special conditions, you have special joint considerations, I would advise this is not for you. But if you know what your limits are, you know how to modify, I think you'll find that this is doable and you'll convince yourself, yes, you do have time to exercise and that it can give you more energy, not less, because sometimes less exercise for women who are already under stress, including the stress of hormonal change, is the right exercise prescription. I'll link to that in the show notes. It's flipping50.com forward slash five, the number five day flip. All right. It's that time of year when temps are dropping, mornings are cooler, even here in Scottsdale, and a fire sounds really nice, cozy. But for some of us, that can all be very tempting to indulge in hot, caffeinated drinks more frequently. Doesn't it sound cozy to spend an extra extra hour with uh, one more mug in the morning or meet a friend for coffee and catch up? And isn't it tempting to hop in that line at Starbucks while you're waiting at the airport for the flight? Or is that just me? Here's what we know. The facts. It's well known that Too much caffeine is not ideal for jitters and for cortisol. It's also well known caffeine is an ergogenic aid. Now, that is, it offers support for endurance in exercise and boosts fat burning during exercise. Caffeine also has effects on focus. Just the right amount can be good. Yet, caffeine has negative effects on women in menopause, especially if you suffer from hot flashes or night sweats. Consider this. This is your episode. So let's talk hot flashes and night sweats. This was back in 2014. So honestly, none of the research that I'm sharing with you today is like, this was published yesterday. You have to know about it. In fact, not, not so much so. However, this is a topic that is like evergreen and always because I don't know about you, but one of the first things I do almost on automatic in the morning is head to get that hot water going so I can have my little caffeine. And so something we visit daily like that ought to be up for conversation on the daily like that. So here we go. A 2014 study published in the Journal of Menopause, it finally published February of 2015 to be exact, looked at about 1,800 female subjects in menopause and pre-menopause, and they found that caffeine is associated with hot flashes and night sweats post-menopause, meaning you're already there and you're in it. Caffeine was associated also with definitely more mental clarity or cognition pre-menopause. So here's what that says. As you might guess, the participants weren't asked to increase caffeine intake or take an inordinate amount of it. This was just probably two cups, maybe, right? Once additional, one additional point of consideration that you want to have it in this case that they only looked at caffeine intake. And I think this is really important. 
they didn't look at whether this was hot coffee because hot liquids, hot soup can trigger your hot flashes as well. So something that you want to be aware of that if you're, you know, drinking hot tea, maybe it's even herbal tea in the morning, that still might for you be a trigger. Something to consider and probably future studies should take a good look at this. So it wasn't whether it was a hot liquid, it was just whether there was caffeine consumption. So this could have been an iced latte or an iced coffee. They also don't include in this study whether coffees were doctored up with, say, dairy, creamers, or sugar products, which could also affect your response to it. Increased sugar intake has been known to trigger more hot flashes and night sweats as well. So while you are conditioned by the time that we reach menopause to turn to caffeine for support with brain fog, with memory, with focus, I mean, I don't know when it started for you, but I was in college. And actually, I didn't start my journey because I was studying for finals, but I certainly used it when I was after I'd learned this little trick. So I was exposed to coffee while I was living with my sister-in-law and my brother for the summer for a college job. And they were drinking it every day. And pretty soon, ha, I was drinking it every day. And every day since then. Thank you very much, Julie. All right. Now, here's the deal. We're conditioned. We turn to it for memory, focus, but it can also trigger hot flashes when we turn to it during menopause. The caffeine and hot liquids both tend to increase symptoms. Just want to echo that. Stable blood sugar levels tend to decrease the occurrence of hot flashes. Here's how they found that out in a different study. So they looked at whether certain foods that were eaten or whether eating foods triggered hot flashes and and during the day is when they were looking. So I won't include night sweat, but they found that the hot flashes occurred after. So between meals, when blood sugar levels returned to lower levels. So how do you stabilize your blood sugar? Well, first of all, you need to make sure you're supporting yourself by burning more fat, learning to do that. Consuming less sugar is a start. You want to reduce your consumption of food and drinks that metabolizes sugar. Increase the foods like uh, avocado and cinnamon, which happen to be natural blood sugar stabilizers. And last, increase your fiber intake, which also helps your cholesterol level and your elimination and digestion and your satiety. What's not to love about fiber? And by the way, you increase in small amounts. The guidelines we follow with all of the Flipping 50 programs is you find, first of all, where you are on average on a daily fiber intake. You add to that five grams of fiber per day and you stay at that goal for at least a week, letting your body adapt slowly. You don't shoot from some arbitrary big goal and then disturb your whole system in doing that. Now, let's talk about exercise and blood sugar stabilization. Strength training regularly supports blood sugar. If you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, strength training and other forms of exercise too should be a part of your health habits for that reason. My caffeine fix lately. So I do love the fat burning during exercise, but here's what I do. No longer am I drinking those cups of coffee. And it's really since my 50s. So I ditched this about a year and a half ago. It was, in fact, when I was visiting someone else and uh uh-huh, said sister-in-law, in fact. <laughs> I said, no, no, you coffee pusher, you. I did not. But I said, nope, I'm giving it up. And I actually was traveling and I did it while I was traveling. So here's something to consider. If you're trying to change a habit, I know a lot of a lot of women will say, well, I'm going on vacation, so I don't want to start it then. Honestly, that can be one of the best times to start a habit change. Why? Well, because you're out of your element. You're out of that normal habit. So instead of going to the kitchen and 
worked in getting the coffee, you know, I started using the mash top, which is what my go-to is now. It's instead of coffee. And it's a little less caffeine, not a lot. It's certainly not caffeine free with less jitters though, and less of an anxiety response tends to have the perfect blend of alert and calming effect due to something called L-theanine. So I use peak tea, Mashta, that's a brand. And by the way, I am an affiliate. So if you should buy from my link, I do make a small amount of commission. Well, you may save from time to time when they have specials that include us. There's a link in my bio because of its quadruple screening. That's why I like it. There are tons of Masha brands on the market. If you go to the grocery store now, it's becoming, you know, there's not, there used to be one or two now. And in fact, it was hard to find. Now you can find probably half a dozen in, in a lot of stores. So it's a product that's grown in the shade, which is why it has this L-theanine, and it's not regulated though. So those products that you're reading that say this is organic or ceremonial, they are not necessarily so. So if it's something you do every day, like putting on lotion, putting on makeup, uh, the water you use, I mean, all of those things affect us more and either disrupt our hormones or support them. Everything you do on a daily basis matters more, right? So you've really got to take a good look at this. And that's including all of you who say, well, I only put a little cream in my coffee. Well, if dairy is an inflammatory food and it bothers you, it could be the cause of your weight loss resistance or that skin that's not clear and the lack of energy. So I don't know. I'm not telling you it is, but I'm telling you it would be a great idea for you to test and find out. And I don't mean a lab test. You test by removing it, and then you test by reintroducing it hot and heavy. There's a special support for doing that. So just so you know, those things are worth a look. So here's another culprit. You're going to get You're going to get some caffeine from the mashta, but not a ton of it. So a little bit less. There may be, say, 100 milligrams per cup of coffee. There may be maybe a third or uh, a quarter of that in the mashta. Now, I like to have a big mug and then I'll have another one. So I'm getting considerable caffeine. It's not a void of it. But the boost of L-theanine for the focus with a small amount of caffeine seems to be a really good combination before, say, a project or you have to write a speech or anything that requires your full-on focus. Another culprit of hot flashes, night sweats, and weight gain is sugar. So anything that metabolizes as sugar is not your friend. That is wine or other alcohol processed foods. In addition to the obvious desserts and leftover holiday candy. So those things can matter too. And just for a few of you who may be highly sensitive people, stevia, which is probably the safest and sometimes also known as monk fruit, um, the safest sweetener that is not sugar, may bother some of you if you're doing it too much. So if you find you've got it in your purse and you add it to your water with lemon at a restaurant and you're using it in your coffee in the morning or your mash tub, as I do, if you're using it all day long and you've got headaches or you're wondering why you don't feel good, it could be a culprit. So look there too. Let's talk fat burning because this is good stuff. As for fat burning effects of caffeine, a little bit in your system, about 30 minutes before a workout can boost fat oxidation, meaning the use of fat for fuel. So that is, it'll spare the use of carbohydrates and increase the use of fat for your fuel. And that is fantastic, especially for endurance exercisers. However, I don't want you to be doing a lot of endurance exercise, not if you really want to balance your hormones. And yes, 
I don't mean that we can create balance or create estrogen where there isn't any. What I mean is you give yourself the best benefit of the balance of cortisol and insulin, your blood sugar levels. Those hormones we can impact and we can do less damage to what is already true of you during the hormonal changes that occur in menopause. So You'll spare your carbs, increase your use of fat, and that's good news, especially for those of you who are reducing your carbohydrate intake. And mind you, I didn't say eliminating. Through the study that was looking at caffeine, it was done on men, so I want to make sure that's clear. The results show, though, it worked in them both in the morning, and they tested them also in an afternoon workout. It's important that for you, any stage menopause female, you realize that the risk of late day high intensity exercise is poor sleep. And it is, even if you're feeling, I don't know, I'm not not sleeping too poorly, unless you're at your optimal weight, optimal body composition, you're feeling great, I would change that late day high intensity exercise. There are 10 tenets of flipping 50. We've been using them for nine years and they've stayed true since the very beginning. But the second one is intense early, light, late. <clears throat> okay, I have shared the benefits of Mashta before a workout. And this was originally probably five or six years ago. Now, how is boosting fat burning by up to 29% after interval training sound, right? So as if now we know pretty, pretty well, all of us, except that interval training burns fat at a faster rate for menopausal females. It is one of the number one ways to work on visceral body fat. And again, as I talk to you, realize I'm talking to hundreds of thousands of women and you are unique. So if you're not in a good place, you're not in a fairly balanced, good energy, I'm good sleeping, you don't necessarily need or want to jump into interval training yet. Can it be good for you? Yes. But if you need to reset, you've dug yourself into a hole where adrenal issues are at risk for you. We've got to fill that hole up before we do more. So making this very clear that you cannot jump ahead. You have to pass go and you do want to collect that $200, meaning fill up the hole, restore yourself, get yourself back to full energy before you go on. Then we'll talk. If you're suffering from hot flashes and night sweats, here's the bottom line. Know that your caffeine consumption may be a part of it. You may be able to have some, but just not as much. So start experimenting. If you are pre-menopause, no signs of maybe scanty or skipping periods, no weight gain, no night sweats, no hot flashes, not even in your 40s. Because sometimes I would have to say I didn't have any symptoms, not at all, until probably my very, very late 40s. So not even a hint I was getting there. And then they kind of all, all came. Yep. All at once. Just like trick-or-treaters at Halloween. <laughs> okay. So if you are pre-menopause, but you're struggling with focus, or you just have a speech to write, you need to dial in a little, a little caffeine might help you. Although though, overdoing it won't give you more focus. All right. Before a workout is a great time to schedule that caffeine. Both should happen in the morning. The caffeine and the workout, high intensity workouts, if you're doing them, to keep the balance with interfering least with your sleep and boosting your fat burning most. Things we want, right? That's the list that goes on. I'm going to include some other episodes that you might enjoy, a review of the episode of the pregnenolone steel, what's happening if you're trying to do late day high intensity workouts, and that study or past blog that includes a video that I'm talking about the 29% fat burning boost from having Masha about 30 minutes before you exercise. There you have it. I would love to hear from you in the show notes. If 
if you'll go to flipping50.com forward slash caffeine and leave me a message. Do you consume caffeine and do you keep it to morning? I'd love to know if also if you're using Mashta. And here's just a little side note. So those of you that want to stay tuned, the rest of you, I will see you on the flip side. Here's how I consume my mashta. I've had people say, I don't really like the taste. Are you kidding me? (laughs) So there's two ways that I've used it consistently for the last, geez, I think it's seven years now. So I began using it, just adding it to smoothies. And that is one way to do it. But when I first came across the study, realizing that if I had it in my system prior to a workout, it was boosting my fat burning even more. Now you get some fat burning even from having it later in the day. So I wouldn't exclude it if you're not just really can't warm up to the idea of mashed up before. But I also would think twice about if you've had caffeine in the form of coffee before you work out, and then you're adding mashta to a smoothie afterward, which is how I started doing it, you're getting more caffeine and you want to think what's the value or the impact of that on you as a positive or negative. So consider that. But when I started using it, that's where I put it. You, it's barely there. You don't necessarily notice it. You notice the green. It turns it uh, pretty green, but you don't necessarily notice the flavor because it's so mild that if you have any other fruit or flavorings in it, that's going to mask it. Um, But it's not um, offensive unless you've got a really kind of sensitive palate and you know who you are. But the way I started then doing it after I realized I wanted in my system prior to doing interval training or strength training as well, there's less research out there, but I think we can extrapolate that it's going to have the same fat burning effect post strength training as it does interval training. So I began having it. Now it's a substitute for my coffee. I will have it with coconut milk. You could use almond milk as well. So warm almond milk and a little bit of stevia with it. So the way you do it is, you know, you pour, you heat up the milk, you pour it into your mug, just maybe a third of the mug, and then you whisk the mashta into that first before you add the remainder of the liquid. I do a little bit of stevia because, yep, I need it doctored up and just a little bit of sweet. And there you have it. That is it. So when I'm in line at Starbucks, I make sure I'm also asking for that. But I will tell you this. So naive little me, when I've gone to Starbucks and got one, I thought, oh, this is so cool. I can now be like the big kids because I don't drink coffee or lattes in the middle of the day or espressos and I'm not going to do that. But when I was like, ah, I can order a mashta, I didn't realize at first that they automatically come sweetened. So I asked for a little bit of stevia. And so of course, now I've got the stevia and it already had sugar in it. So I don't do that very much anymore because I'm not going to order sugar knowingly, but something that you probably want to consider. If this is the lesser of evils and you know you're going to do something, that might be the way you two want to go. All right, it's flipping50.com forward slash caffeine. I'll put the links to the other show notes. I'll put the links to the resources like the Mashta that I love and to the resources that I used, the scientific studies and quoted from the episode. What are you waiting for? The world needs us right now more than ever. I'm off to get my next cup of Mashta. <laughs>